I was wrong about the Huawei Band 9, but I was also right. And that's why today's video is a very important one to watch, even if you're not interested in the Huawei Band 9 specifically. Let me explain. A few weeks ago, I made a first video on the Huawei Band 9 in which I showed that the Band 9 appeared to perform less good than the older Band 8, at least based on my initial data. Now, because of technical reasons, I could only access a limited amount of data, but I thought it was important to show you what I had already. I now have access to the full set of data I had at the time which tells a different and potentially even more interesting story. And it's not just about the Wild Band 9, though of course I'll be doing a full health tracking review in this video. It also tells you something about the testing of smartwatches in general and the potential reasons why I might get different results from for instance DC Rainmaker or Matt Legrand, but more on that later. In this video, we'll focus on two aspects of the Huawei Band 9, the sleep stage tracking performance and the heart rate tracking accuracy. And I want to start off with the heart rate. I tested the heart rate tracking performance on myself, and here you can see an overview of that performance for one of the easiest exercises for a watch to track, cycling indoors, which I tested on myself for four sessions. Now to test the performance, I'll compare the heart rate measurements against the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, which can generally record my heart rate very accurately. Now each dot in this plot is a single heart rate measurement with along the horizontal axis the value according to the reference and on the vertical axis the value according to the Huawei Band 9. Now the closer the points are to this blue line the better the agreement and the darker black the color the more dots that there are. Now you might notice that it says right here on the watch face which means we're looking at the results for the Band 9 I wore on my right wrist because I actually wore two at the same time, one on my right and one on my left. Now as you can see overall there are some agreements so there's many points close to the blue line but we do see quite a few points away from the blue line as well also near this red line and the red line actually indicates it detected half the actual heart rate so there is some deviation here it's not terrible but definitely not great and we can actually quantify the agreement by calculating the correlation which is this r value up here which at 0.81 is mediocre at best probably even below mediocre but here we're only looking at the watch on my right wrist which is the one i also used in my previous video but we should also look at the results for the one on my left wrist which is displayed on the left right here and now we see a much better agreement there's many more points on or close to the blue line and the deviation is much less there's still a few points above the blue line but especially below the blue line the results look a lot better the correlation is also a lot higher now at 0.96 which is actually really good but let's take a look at the individual spinning sessions to see what's going on and here you can see the first example interval spinning session with the reference in red and the Huawei Band 9 one on my right wrist in green and the one on my left wrist in blue. And as you can see, the one in blue definitely has a better overlap with the reference than the one in green. The one in green shows quite a bit of deviation, whereas the blue one overlaps almost perfectly. And for this second ride, we mostly see the same thing. So there's a bit more deviation by the green one, or at least more obvious deviation. But the blue one sometimes struggle detecting the full dip in my heart rate. For this third example, both Band 9s did really well, actually. Small struggles, but overall a good performance. And finally, for this fourth and final example, again, it's the one on my right hand that struggled right here, detecting an increase in my heart rate, whereas the blue one performed really well. So there definitely appears to be a difference in the quality of the data recorded between the Huawei Band 9 I wore on my right wrist versus the one I wore on my left wrist. However, I want to know how big that difference actually is relative to the performance of all the other watches out there. So let's take a look. And that overview is displayed right here. Now the correlation value I was talking about before is the metric I will use for this, which is displayed along the horizontal axis right here. We want that value to be as close to 1 as possible. Now on the vertical axis, I ordered the watches from worst to best. So the further to the right and the higher devices, the better is its correlation with the reference device. Now here I marked both band nines in red. And as you can see, there's quite a performance difference between the two. I would say that the one on my right hand, so the one on the bottom right here, is amongst the poorer performing watches, whereas the one on my left wrist, which is on top right here, is amongst the medium to high medium performing watches. But let's zoom in a bit so we can read those labels better. And here we have a slightly zoomed in plot with just the watches of a correlation of 0.7 or higher. And as you can see, there's quite a few watches in between the one on my left and right wrist. And I'm really not sure what's going on here. But we need to zoom in even a bit further to see what watches are very close to the better performing Huawei band. And that final zoomed in view is displayed right here. So these are just the watches with a correlation of 0.9 or higher. So just some of the better performing watches. 
And as you can see, the Huawei Band 9 on my left wrist is very close to the Huawei Band 8, so very close to the previous generation, but also some other Huawei devices like, for instance, the Huawei Watch 3 and the Huawei Watch GT3. So it's really doing quite well. It's not doing quite as well as some of the newer, more high-end Huawei watches like the GT4 and the Huawei Watch Fit 2 and 3, but overall a decent performing watch. As regular viewers will know, devices from Huawei tend to do very well. The only device that really clearly outperforms them is the Apple Watch. So the Apple Watch is really in a league of its own and also the Whoop Strap is doing quite well. Okay, let's next take a look at another exercise, which is generally a bit harder for watches to track running outside. Now due to an injury, I only have a single run, but the results are super interesting. By the way, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. But okay, back to the results. And here we have a similar overview to before, but now for running, with again the watch worn on my left wrist on the left and the one worn on my right wrist on the right. And as you can see, the results look mostly very similar. They have the exact same correlation value at 0.99. Though looking at it in a bit more detail, it does seem optically at least that the one worn on my left wrist has the points a bit closer to the blue line compared to the one worn on my right wrist, especially in the higher heart rate range. Still overall, both are doing pretty good, but we really need to take a look at the run itself. Now, as I said, I only have a single run, so we have very little data to work with, but we see a good overlap between both band nines and the reference device. Only right here, the green one, so the one on my right wrist deviates a bit more, but otherwise looking really good. Though I should mention, I didn't do intervals here, which is often a bit harder for a watch to track. Now here we have a similar overview to before, but now for running. Now I should mention, I tested far fewer devices for running, so that's why this plot is much more empty. But we can see that both Huawei Band 9s marked here in red are doing really well. They're really among some of the top performers out there, and they're really close to different Apple watches. Now the one thing that makes this comparison a bit unfair is that for all the other watches, watches that did a lot of interval runs, which tend to be a lot harder to track, so the Huawei Band 9 really had an advantage here. Still overall, with just this one exercise, the first indication is really good. Next, let's take a look at cycling outside. This is a bit more difficult because of the increased bumpiness, but also because of the tension on my arm. So let's have a look at that. After before showing you those results, I'm hoping that my diligent testing has earned a subscribe from you and also really helps me get access to devices sooner from manufacturers if you leave a like or a comment. But enough self-promotion, let's take a look at the performance of the Wireband 9 for outdoor cycling. Again, an overview you're familiar with, but for cycling outside, we see a slightly decreased performance compared to cycling indoors and running, which we generally see for most watches. Again, the one worn on my left wrist seems to be doing slightly better than the one worn on my right wrist. The correlation is a bit higher at 0.83 versus 0.78. You can also see the points are just a bit closer to the blue line with fewer deviations. But both the correlation of 0.83 and 0.78 aren't that terrible, honestly. It's not amazing, but it's better than many other watches out there. I should also mention that in my initial review, the correlation for the right one was 0.64. So this is already an improvement at 0.78. So more data definitely seems to be giving us a better picture. But let's take a look at the individual rides to see how big the difference between the left and right wrist actually is. And again, here we have a similar plot to before with the bent 9 on my right wrist in green and the other one in blue. And as you can see, if we compare to the reference in red, the blue one tends to agree better than the green one. So here we can see a performance difference between the two watches. And also for this second example bike ride, we see a much better agreement of the blue line versus the green line. But I must say, looking at all examples, both are not terrible by any means, but overall, either they're performing about the same or the blue one is doing a bit better. I only found a single example, this one right here, where the one on my right wrist did better than the one on my left wrist. But for all the other examples, either they're performing the same or the one on my left wrist was better than the one on my right wrist. And as you can see right here, compared to other devices, both Band 9s didn't do bad at all. They're not top performers, but they're in the upper middle class of watches. But again, let's zoom in a bit so we can read those labels better. And that zoomed in view is displayed right here. So these are just the watches with a correlation of 0.7 or higher. And as you can see, the two Huawei Band 9s are close to, for instance, the Huawei Band 7, but somehow doing a little bit worse than the Huawei Band 8, at least as it did in the testing back then. I'm not sure if this is a significant difference or just by chance, but I'm happy to see that the performance of both these Band 9s is a lot better than in my initial testing. It's not quite as good as some of the higher end Huawei watches like the Huawei Watch Fit 2, the Huawei Watch Fit 3, and the Huawei Watch GT3 Pro or GT4, but overall not a bad performance. And again, the top performer out there is the Apple Watch, but of course this is a lot more expensive than the Huawei Band 9. But of course, Apple only works with iOS, so if you want something on Android, for instance, the Whoop Strap, the Pixel Watch 2, and also the Fitbit Charge 6 all do quite well. 
So the Band 9 shows significantly improved performance compared to the results I had in my first video, which is great to see. I'm happy that my first results didn't translate completely at least to long-term performance issues. Though again, the Band 9 I wore on my right wrist potentially performed a bit worse compared to the one on my left wrist. But what about weightlifting? This is generally one of the hardest exercises for a watch to track. Did the Band 9 struggle tracking this? Watches actually often struggle with weightlifting because there's so much tension on my arm making it very hard to get a clean signal. But for the Huawei Band 9 it actually doesn't look bad at all, both for the one on my left wrist and the right wrist. Again, the left wrist is looking a bit better with fewer points away from the blue line and also a higher correlation at 0.9 versus the 0.81 for the one on my right wrist. But overall both aren't doing that bad. We can see for the one on my right wrist there's especially much deviation in the higher heart rate range which is to be expected because these are the peaks in my heart rate so when I'm doing a set and there's a lot of tension on my arm. But again let's take a look at those individual weightlifting sessions. For this first example weightlifting session right here we again see that the band 9 on my left wrist so the one in blue seems to be doing better than the band 9 on my right wrist so the one in green. So overall again a confirmation that that one somehow seems to be doing a little bit better. And for this second example weightlifting session both seem to be doing quite well though again the blue line might be slightly better than the green line. Overall both are doing quite well honestly. They're not capturing all peaks fully but they're doing a lot better than many other devices out there. And again here's an overview of how the watch is performed with the band 9 on my right wrist right here and the one on my left wrist right here. So again there's definitely some difference in testing metrics but overall both are not doing terrible and when we zoom into just the better performing watches so just the watches with a correlation of 0.7 or higher we can see that the one on my left wrist is in a region that I would say potentially is good enough to track my heart rate during weightlifting. So I generally say I just take watches with a correlation of 0.9, preferably though 0.95 or higher for weightlifting. And the one on my right wrist wouldn't be in this region, though I would definitely need more testing data to draw any definitive conclusions. At the moment I'm unsure if the band 9 is good enough for weightlifting, but it's not bad at all. And for those of you that are interested in the band 8, this is right here. So this actually did a bit worse than both band 9s in this case. Wow, so that's really not looking too bad at all. The difference between the band 9 and the band 8 isn't that big. And it's actually difficult to say if either of these is doing significantly better. Both are doing a quite good job at tracking my heart rate, at least if you consider the better of the two band 9s I have. Just looking at the better one of the two band 9s, I'd give the heart rate tracking performance probably 4 out of 5 stars. Taking both into account though, I might deduct just half a star. But more on why we see such a difference between my two band 9s later. Let's first take a look at how the sleep stage tracking performed. Huawei introduced the new Huawei True Sleep 4.0 algorithm for their sleep tracking, but is that any better than the previous generations? Let's take a look. To test the sleep stage tracking performance, I'll compare the band 9 against the ZMAX EG headband, which can actually measure my brain waves. This device also has its limitations, especially when it comes to detecting awake time but it will give us a general impression of the sleep stage tracking performance of the band 9. Now in the beginning I'll focus on the watch on my left wrist since this seems to give the most reliable heart rate data which is likely an important measurement to calculate the sleep stages. And here I show you an overview of the sleep test results for 4 nights. Now on top are the sleep stages as recorded by the ZMAX EEG device and on the left are the sleep stages as recorded by the band 9. And each column here sums to 100% meaning that we can see what percentage of each of the sleep stages according to the ZMAX was predicted as each sleep stage by the band 9. And if they perfectly agree all values on the diagonal should be 100%. Now first of all we see that only about 43% of what was deep sleep according to the ZMAX was also predicted as deep sleep by the band 9 so that isn't very good. A lot of it was actually predicted as being light sleep or REM sleep instead. Now light sleep agreement is also not great, it's not absolutely terrible but at 57% it's honestly still quite low and a lot of confusion was actually with deep sleep and REM sleep instead. REM sleep agreement was also not very good at about 40%, it's actually the lowest out of all these three stages right here and more of what was REM sleep according to the ZMAX EEG device was actually predicted as light sleep instead by the band 9. So that's not very good, 48% of it was predicted as light sleep instead. Now we're not going to focus on awake time because ZMAX tends to detect a lot of these short arousals that are not interesting for us. But just for completeness, about 35% of what was awake time according to the ZMAX was also detected as awake time by the band 9. Now so far we only focused on the one on my left wrist but I did similar recordings with the one on my right wrist. And the results are more or less the same, they're not identical but overall the conclusions don't change. Deep sleep agreement is okay-ish but mediocre at best, 
Also, light sleep agreement isn't very good, and the worst is REM sleep agreement for both of them. So overall, very similar performance, and this confirms for me that the Band 9 likely isn't a very good sleep stage tracker. I actually wanted to show you one individual night to help us understand a bit better what this actually looks like, and here we can see the night I wanted to share with you. On top, we have the sleep stages as recorded by the EEG device, with along the horizontal axis the clock time and my sleep stages on the vertical axis and on the bottom something similar but now for the band 9. And in purple right here I highlighted all the deep sleep as recorded by the EEG device and as you can see there's marginal agreement at best. There's some overlap so some of the deep sleep recorded by the band 9 is also deep sleep according to the EEG device but a lot of extra deep sleep is recorded by the band 9 and also some deep sleep is missing so overall not looking very good. But these results are for the one on my left wrist. What about the one on my right wrist? The patterns in terms of deep sleep look a lot different and the fact that there's so little agreement between the two devices again shows that the sleep stage tracking likely isn't very reliable. Now as we saw before REM sleep was one of the poorer performing sleep stages and we can see that clearly looking at this example. A lot of the REM sleep detected by the EEG device isn't detected by the band 9 and the band 9 also detects a lot of extra REM sleep so not looking very good. And again we see very different REM sleep patterns for the one on my right wrist so if we go back and forth between them here we have the one on my left wrist and here's the one on my right wrist. Very different REM sleep patterns and again not giving me a lot of confidence in the sleep stage tracking of the band 9. And as I said I don't want to focus on awake detection but it does seem that the longer awake moments do tend to agree between the EEG device and the band 9. But overall this is not something I want to focus on. So overall the sleep stage tracking performance of the Huawei band 9 just isn't that great. Not with either of the two bands I tested. Both the deep sleep and REM sleep agreement are quite low. So similar to my recommendations for other Huawei watches, you can use the Band 9 to track your total time in bed and your overall sleep time, but even with True Sleep 4.0, you can't really rely on the sleep stage tracking. However, let's put these results into context and compare their performance to the performance of many other watches out there. But before doing that, I'm planning to start back up with my newsletter after the summer to share my first results with you sooner. If you're interested, check out the link up here. Now back to the results. This graph right here shows you an overview of the agreement of different watches with the EEG device. Along the horizontal axis we have the average agreement over the individual sleep stages and on the vertical axis we have the agreement of the worst sleep stage. Now the better the agreement the more to the top right the device is. I do have to mention that this overview is slightly complicated because it use different reference devices. The device is not marked in any color were tested against the Dream 2 EEG headband my normal reference but Dream went bankrupt so I cannot use it anymore. The devices marked in blue purple were tested against polysomnography which is the gold standard in sleep stage tracking and the devices marked in green were tested against the ZMAX EEG headband so the reference we used in this video. And here you can see both of the band 9s quite close to each other so the one on my left wrist and the one with an R right here is the one on my right wrist. And as you can see they're really among some of the poorer performing watches and really close to all of the other Huawei devices. So for instance the Huawei Watch Fit 3 but also the GT4 and both the 46 and 41 millimeter version. And we can see a lot of other Huawei devices right here as well. So I really think that no matter what kind of Huawei device you're using you really should just focus on your total time in bed and that's the most valuable information the Huawei Watch is giving you. If you want to look at some of the better performing watches out there, we can see that Apple watches are amongst the absolute top and also the Aura Ring is doing quite well. We saw in a previous video where I looked at the scientific literature that Apple and Aura are really some of the best performers out there. Other devices which I couldn't find any scientific publications on but which in my testing did really well are for instance the HSleep Pod, so both the Pod 3 and Pod 4. And in the second tier of devices there's Fitbits and the Whoop Strap, both of these are also doing really well. Garmin on the other hand doesn't have a really good sleep stage tracking algorithm, still doing better in my opinion than the Huawei bands and different Huawei devices. So that's sort of the ranking I would give it. So if you're looking for a sleep stage tracker I wouldn't go for a Huawei band. So honestly the sleep stage tracking performance of the band 9 just isn't that good. You could use it to keep track of your bad times and make sure that you give your body enough sleep opportunity but that's about it. Therefore I'd give the sleep stage tracking performance of the Huawei band 9 2 out of 5 stars. Still overall I think my testing results are good news for Huawei and their Band 9. The results seem to indicate that the Band 9 is better than my initial results indicated. Their new sensor layout might not be as bad as I initially thought and my new testing seems to indicate that it's roughly on par with the older Huawei Band 8 though we do see some slight differences, some in favor of the Band 9 and some in favor of the Band 8. At least that is if we consider the better of the two Band 9s I have. So why is it actually that these two different Band 9s give different results and 
why were my initial results even worse than the results I have now? Well, I have several theories. The first thing that likely played a role is that random variation in performance meant that the limited amount of data I initially had was unfortunately not representative of the actual performance. You can imagine that each time I do the exact same heart rate test, there's a chance it might be better or worse than average. This is usually represented by this type of bell curve, where the height in the curve indicates the chance of getting a better or worse result for a single test. Now, the smaller the amount of tests that I do, the larger the chance that several will be biased in the same direction, making the watch appear better or worse than in reality. However, that cannot be the full story, because we still see a difference between the watches I wore on my right and left wrist, and this could have other causes as well. The first is that the way my bones and blood flow are formed on both my wrists are just slightly different, making it easier to measure on the left side versus the right side. Or it could be that the production quality of one watch was just better than the other. I can't say which of these is true if any, unless I collect a lot more data. Still, the Huawei Band 9 appears to be quite decent overall, at least when it comes to heart rate tracking, which means I can now recommend it if you want a cheap heart rate tracker that's pretty good. Keep in mind though that watches do perform differently sometimes on different people, so also check out the results of some other reviewers. If you do decide to get a Huawei Band 9, a Whoop Strap, an Aura Ring, an Sleep Pod 4, another device, or anything at all on Amazon for that matter, even something as small as toilet paper, want to potentially save some money and at the same time support the channel, there are different affiliate and non-affiliate links in the description below that do not cost you any extra and some even provide a discount. Now given that you watched this whole video on the Huawei Band 9, check out this video on the new Huawei Watch Fit 3 or this video on my top recommendations for sleep stage tracking. Thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video.